this is Andy Tube, and this is the Singer Model 413, and I've been starting some work on it uh, to restore it and get it running for sale, and I'm uh, making some videos as I go, and I, I notice that it's it's uh, scraping the heck out of my uh, work surface here. This is just a painted piece of uh, masonite siding that's sitting on top of a very old uh, sewing desk. But anyway, um, you know, it's because these bed cushions, the old, what's commonly called rubber feet, they're just all beat to heck here and hard as a, hard as a rock. And uh, so I thought, well, I'm just going to go ahead and, and take them off. Um, for now, or maybe uh, put the new ones on now. I usually wait till towards the end, but but I have them. So I just I took the first one off, and I was looking at the uh, bed cushion screw, and there's there's some rust on it. This one is not too bad, uh, but they can be pretty pretty nasty. So I thought, well, no problem. I'll just uh, soak them in my rust remover for a few minutes. And then at that point, I said, well, maybe I'll make a little video. So that's what I'm doing in this video is I'm going to take out the old bed feet and clean the screws with this uh, rust remover and uh, go ahead and put the new ones on. Uh, I've done this before in other videos, too. This product I use is called The Must for Rust and it's a crud cutter brand just like the uh, cleaner degreaser that I use and they're both made by Rust-Oleum and I just picked this up uh, the closest place I can buy it to me is the Home Depot store a couple miles away and I think it's about six dollars for this eight ounce uh, uh, product so let's uh, let's go ahead and and take the rest of these uh, screws out. Sometimes they're they're pretty stubborn. Like I said, they can be uh, rusted in there pretty pretty good. And if you have trouble getting them out, you can use a, a, a penetrating uh, oil. To, to help you. I have my little Chapman sewing machine screwdriver tools. A hollow ground point screwdrivers for a good fit. But I took the first one out and it wasn't too bad. Let's see if I can... Yeah. Yep. So, but like I said, if, if they, they can be rusted in pretty good you know, especially if the machine has been stored in a uh, uh, garage or a storeroom or a basement. And uh, Arizona is a very dry climate, and we didn't, don't really have that much trouble with rust here. But I know a lot of parts of the United States and the world are very humid. So if you, uh, yeah, sometimes I can pull that out with a magnet once it's unscrewed. But uh, let's see if I can work this free a little bit. Sometimes I can just put my thumb on here once the screw is loose and, and push it. You know, like push it up or push it to the side and kind of peel it out. of. There's a little indentation area that it goes into. This is going to be pretty, pretty stubborn. There we go. So let's see if we can get a better look at that. There's the little base that it fits into, you know. And then this is the this is what it looks like. So let me let me push it out of here and see if I can get it the rest of the way out. There we go. So this this you can see the rust on here. And I used to use my Dremel tool and a wire brush, you know, and hold it here with the plier and bzz, buzz them up for a few minutes. But then I found this Must for Rust product. 
and uh, you know it saves me a lot of time I just put them in a little container and put some of that liquid in there and let them sit a few minutes while I do something else and uh, they come out real good I'll show you that later so let's uh, let's continue getting these out of here so I can do the rust removal on all of them at once um, a lot of people don't bother with this especially if they're going to put the machine in a cabinet but I, I buy the feet online either at so classic shop so classic or there's another place uh, central michigan showing sewing which will take you to the ebay site uh, i think it's 231 terry and they both sell a lot of the rubber feet for machines and uh, have the best prices i i usually buy like a dozen at a time and then i can get them for you know like 85 cents or something each this one's pretty rusty too so let me let me just take the other one out I got three out of the four out let me take the other one out here and then I'll be back okay that that last one came right out and uh, when when you take these out sometimes I've had to just uh, you know crush them with pliers and dig them out um, I like to use a little can opener tool uh, to get to get in there and grab it and scrape it out. Sometimes they'll leave a residue. They've been in there so long and hard and they get sticky and I don't know what kind of uh, I don't think these were really a rubber but I, I don't know what they were. But if I get a residue in there before I before I put any new ones in I take something a flat blade and just uh, scrape, you know, scrape the any broken pieces that get stuck in the edge and so forth. And then uh, I still take some of my TriFlow uh, Superior lubricant and just put a couple drops on an interdental uh, little. Thing I buy at the dollar store, you know, those little tiny brushes for your gums, and I'll just go in there and put a little oil in there. And uh, if they're real rusty, I'll do this with the rust remover first to uh, make sure that I don't get these screws all cleaned up and de rusted, and then put them in a rusty. A hole on the machine you know but the uh, machine itself is a cast aluminum but uh, these screws are silver so you know they can rust so here I, I've got my new feet and I've got a little plastic cup here and uh, you know what I'm going to try and take a close-up picture of this so we can have a better picture of before and after cleaning uh, let me see if I can scan them actually on my scanner if not I'll try and take a better picture of them yay I was able to get a nice scan uh, close-up of these um, so I'll, I'll show you later um, a comparison slide between the before and after cleaning but anyway, I just uh, put them in some, a little, you know, a pill bottle or like this is from a laundry soap. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this rust for must and, and just, just put enough to uh, cover them. And... A lot of times after I use an amount like this, I'll put it in an empty jar or something to save it because uh, it can be reused quite a number of times before it will uh, stop working. So let me just start a little uh, 
stopwatch here so I can keep track of the time. Yeah. So I'll keep an eye on these and check them, you know, every couple of minutes until I, I think they're clean and then I'll come back and we can see how long it, it takes. But um, I always I always change these. Even if they're not beat up and worn down this bad. Uh, and these are not that bad. I've had them where the screw is sticking out, uh, you know, farther than what's left of these. But even if they're not beat up, they're hard as a rock. And if somebody takes that machine and puts it on a furniture or something like that, it'll get all scratched up. So I figure, a, you know, less than a dollar a piece for these new ones. And I, and they call them rubber feet. I don't know if they're actually rubber. I doubt it. I think they're probably some kind of a synthetic, you know, rubber or vinyl blend. But they're softer and they, they hold up pretty good. So uh, anyway, when these are starting to look not rusty, <laughs> I'll, I'll come back and we'll take a look at them. Okay, when, when I checked the screws here at about five minutes, two of them were clean. The, the rust was gone. And uh, that's very, very common for me to see in just a few minutes. The, the rust is gone, so I fished them out and took a look at them. And uh, what's nice is even the slot for the screwdriver gets clean in there. And when I use my Dremel, that the Dremel won't reach in there very, very good at all. But the chemical does. But the other two, um, it's been over 10 minutes now. The other two at 5 minutes had this band, a uh, dark band around the top of the screw. Probably where it was poking out of the, uh, of the, uh, let me wipe that off here where it was poking out of the, the old foot and it's got this little dark band going on around there and it didn't look like rust but I, I don't know if it's some other chemical that got on there but it, let me try and wipe it off here now see it's not wiping off let me look at the other one so I don't think that that's uh, rust because it didn't change at all. You know, I've had very rusty screws I've left in as long as like a half hour, you know. And they were they were just really rusted, rusted bad. But from five minutes to almost 11 minutes, these dark spots did not um, really change at all. And they're not just wiping off. Um, I don't, I don't have my Dremel out today, but let me just take some of the 600 grit sandpaper that I use on the motor commutators and see if that'll get off whatever residue is on there. I guess I could use some 400 or something, but if it's not rust, I'm not that worried about it. I just don't want to put rusty screws back in. And it looks like whatever it is, is, is coming off, or some of it is anyway, with the uh, sandpaper. So, let me do that a little bit, just to get off what I can without using the Dremel. I'll do it on the other one, too, and then I'll, I'll do a scan of that for my comparison photo at the end and then we'll put the feet back in okay that's that's helping some okay I'll be back okay I got a I got a good scan of these now and I did sand these about uh, oh, a minute or a minute and a half each with that sandpaper and it got off most of that black staining it really didn't look like rust but whatever it was, um, it came off good enough for me. I'm happy to get the rust off. And the nice thing about this uh, must for rust 
is it helps prevent rust in the future I think for like up to a year but like I said I still go ahead and um, put oil in the in the screw holes just so that they'll go in easy and uh, you know the machine will outlive these new uh, bed cushions you know so uh, someday somebody might want to get that screw out again and I figured just having a little bit of that triflow oil in there will will help so I put the screw in the new foot and uh, see if I can get it up here and get started I'll show you how whoop, I'll show you how to put one in you don't need to watch me put the other three but you just want to make sure you don't strip the threads because steel screw aluminum bed you can strip the aluminum screw but they're fairly coarse uh, threads so you should be okay and and you do want to um, let me get this started I guess I can't talk and install a screw at the same time there we go <laughs> Uh, you do want to deadhead the screw and by, by that I mean put it in all the way until it doesn't turn you know you don't have to put a hundred pounds of pressure on it after that just put it in snug but be sure and put it in all the way because that helps uh, spread the, the cushion out into the hole and it'll keep that screw from vibrating loose hmm, looks pretty good doesn't it looks a lot better than the old one <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> okay so anyway that was just a little video about that in case somebody wants to do that and uh, at the end of it here I will put um, the comparison slide of the screws before and after I'll put a link to maybe the web page for this must for rust because people often ask about that and I think I'll put a link to a couple of places that I buy these rubber feet. They, they, the, the same size fits an awful lot of machines. Like this same one will fit not the 301, but the 401, 403, 404, 500, uh, 503, a lot of the 600s. But a reputable seller, if you're not sure, like, like this is a 413, you know, I could have emailed them and said, hey, I, I want to use, is this okay to the right size for a model 413 or 457 or 337? And they'll, and they'll respond. A lot of times they, they list the height and the circumference right on the website. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, I hope it was worth your time. And I hope you'll come back and see me uh, in the future. Take care.